Gaius Julius Caesar was a man whose remarkable life was marked by incredible battles and fierce political intrigue that would inspire kings and soldiers alike for over 2,000 years. His legacy was one of renown and infamy and something to be both feared and admired. He rose through the ranks of class and status, going from the son of a poor regional governor to a priest in the Temple of Jupiter to soldier of the Republic to the commander of legions. Caesar would lead armies to victory over the rebels in Hispania and the Germanic tribes south of the Rhine and become known as the conqueror of Gaul. Caesar's influence allowed him to become a part of the first triumvirates alongside Gnaeus Pompey Magnus and Marcus Licinius Crassus, two of the most influential and powerful men to have ever lived in the ancient world. Caesar's military exploits expanded the borders of the Republic beyond their measure and would give him the popularity and status to be able to seize control over the Roman Republic and ascend to the position of dictator of Rome. This move allowed Caesar to gain unparalleled power and challenge the very foundation of the Republic and ultimately result in his assassination by his political rivals in the Senate, which would ultimately lead to the creation of the Roman Empire. With a life as rich and exciting as Caesar's, particularly with respect towards his military career and political maneuvering, there are many aspects and events that tend to get overlooked in the scope of his legacy. Welcome to Intrigued Mind, and today we will examine a few of the misconceptions and the weirdest, most scandalous, and truly unusual facts about Julius Caesar, the last dictator of the Roman Republic and the progenitor of the Roman Empire. Gaius Julius Caesar, born on July 13, 100 BCE in Rome to a poor but noble family, his father, also named Gaius Julius Caesar, was a regional governor of Asia in the service of the Republic, and his mother, Aurelia, was the daughter of a consul. Little is specifically known about Caesar's early life, and much has been left to speculation, including the matter of his birth, which has been subject to conjecture for over two millennia. One of the most common misconceptions about Julius Caesar is that he was born through the medical procedure of Caesarean section, or the surgical means of delivering a fetus through an incision made in the mother's uterus and abdomen. This method of delivering a child was almost certainly named after Julius Caesar, but historians do not believe Caesar himself was actually born this way as a caesarean section is also a complex and delicate surgery that in the ancient world would have been incredibly difficult. At the time of Caesar's birth, it is believed all mothers who received a caesarean section would not have survived the process, either due to previous complications during labor or because of the operation itself. Any woman who received such a procedure in ancient Rome would have almost certainly died. Caesar's mother Aurelia lived 46 more years after giving birth to her son and was a close confidant to her son throughout his life, serving to disseminate doubt that Caesar was brought into the world through Caesarean section. Another popular misconception about Caesar was that he suffered from ilerophobia, or the fear of cats. This is considered by most historians to be but a rumor, disseminated by misrepresentation online in the modern era. The idea has been perpetuated in recent years due to the real phobia of cats that Alexander the Great one of Julius Caesar's inspirations and greatest influences, had in his own life. In the many texts about Caesar that survive from his life, there has been no mention of such a phobia. Caesar never seemed destined for an ordinary life, and even with little specifically written about his youth, it is known he grew to be an intriguing young man. As the son of low-level aristocrats, much of his life was subject to the whims of the complex world of the nobility, with ever-changing favor and hatred filling the everyday social scene. Had life turned out differently for Julius Caesar, he may have most likely spent his days as a high priest in the Temple of Jupiter, a notable but not expressly well-known or distinguished position. While serving in the temple, he married his first wife, noblewoman Cornelia, who was the daughter of a political rival to Sulla, the dictator of Rome in 84 BCE. Sulla greatly disapproved of the marriage between Caesar and Cornelia and the union between Caesar's aunt Julia and his enemy Gaius Marius, a consul and ally of Caesar's. Sulla demanded Caesar divorce Cornelia, but the young man refused. Sulla stripped him of his inheritance, status as a priest, and any holdings of land Caesar possessed to pressure him to concede. But Caesar remained steadfast. Sulla was infuriated and sought to execute Caesar. But when members of the nobility, other family relations, and the Vestal Virgins protected Caesar, Sulla eventually recanted. Caesar, to protect himself further from Sulla, left the temple and joined the army, setting him on a path to becoming a military leader and commander that would forever change the ancient world. Over the next few years, Caesar established himself as an excellent soldier, learning the craft of war and honing his skills as a commander, rising through the ranks of the Roman legions. He received commendation for his contributions during several notable battles and served in the court of the Greek king Nicomedes of Bithynia as a diplomat to gain allies for the Republic. In 78 BCE, with the death of Sulla, 
Caesar returned to Rome and moved to serve as a legal activist that prosecuted crooked counselors and governors for unlawful and unethical endeavors, such as exploitation of the lower classes and blackmail of other officials. In 75 BCE, Caesar was becoming more well-known throughout the Republic as a soldier, advocate, and tactician who had acquired some renown and wealth attached to his name. While he was traveling to Rhodes to study under the renowned Greek rhetorician Apollonius, his ship was attacked off the coast of Asia Minor by pirates and abducted Caesar. The bandits were said to have treated Caesar well, knowing they could get paid well for his return. The pirates first wanted 25 talents as a payment for the return of the young man to the Roman lands, but Caesar felt insulted by such a low ransom demand, insisting they increase his cost to 50 talents, a much more appropriate sum for a man of his standing. The pirates were impressed by the young man's nerve and agreed to raise the ransom. Caesar became friendly with his captors, famously dining with them, telling stories and jokes, and gaming with them to pass the time. When the pirates told Caesar his ransom was to be met, the young man turned to his captors and informed them once he was released, he would raise a force to pursue them, capture them, and execute them all. The pirates laughed at such a boastful claim and upon payment, let Caesar go and return to the shores of the Roman Republic. The newly freed Caesar immediately hired a crew, a ship, and a band of men to go after the brigands. All the pirates were eventually caught, beaten, and crucified. It is rumored Caesar showed some of the abductors mercy by slitting their throats before they were strung up so they would not suffer. Either way, Caesar's reputation and notoriety spread throughout the Republic and gave him further influence in Rome to pursue more advantageous avenues. Like many of his contemporaries, was said to have had a rich and wild romantic life that is said to have been just as adventurous as his military campaigns. As a young adult, it was said Caesar enjoyed cross-dressing as a woman and serving as the passive partner to men. While practices of private cross-dressing and engaging in homosexuality were not condemned in the Roman Republic, being the passive partner was viewed as effeminate or even unacceptable social behavior at the time. This was especially true for someone pursuing a career in politics or the military. Caesar did, however, have some possibly effeminate qualities, such as a high-pitched voice that was said to have been reminiscent of a woman's. The feminine role was perceived as weaker, as women at this time were seen as less than men, characteristics that only fueled more contempt for Caesar from his enemies. One of Caesar's most famous male partners was believed to have been King Nicomedes of Bithynia, a Greek royal who had shown the young Caesar favor during his early years in the military. It was said, Caesar played the passive role in their relationship and continued their affair well into Caesar's rise to power in the triumvirate and vanquisher of Gaul. The relationship was so well known that there was a chant that was frequently sung by the legions. Caesar may have conquered Gaul, but Nicomedes conquered Caesar. It was heard throughout the legions, including by Caesar's own loyal men, who would chant it while marching. Whether or not this was a vicious rumor or an exaggeration of his relationship with Nicomedes, Caesar continued to deny ever having any romantic relationships with Nicomedes or being a passive partner. Caesar, conversely, was known throughout the Republic as a passionate womanizer, marrying three times and having flings with prostitutes, concubines, noblewomen, and royalty throughout his life. Some historians believe it was a way for him to combat the rumors of his effeminacy or to appear more masculine. Either way, Caesar was infamous for his romantic entanglements. After the death of his wife Cornelia in 69 BC, who he had married in 84 BCE, Caesar married the granddaughter of a former Roman dictator named Pompeia two years later. Pompeia and Caesar would divorce five years later in 62 BCE, after being Pompeia was caught in the company of a nobleman who snuck into a festival for women only. Caesar married his third wife, Calpurnia, in 59 BCE, but continued to have affairs throughout his life, including Queen Eunoe of Mauritania. But his most famous love affair was one that is still considered one of the greatest romances of the ages, a courtship with Cleopatra. After pursuing his former friend turned rival Pompey to Egypt in 48 BCE, Pompey was killed by Egyptian assassins who were dispatched to eliminate Pompey in hopes of winning over Caesar to obtain an alliance with Rome. Caesar was infuriated by the death of Pompey, a Roman citizen killed like a common criminal, and sought to get justice for the death of his enemy. He arrived in Egypt and was presented with the assassins, who were then promptly executed. Caesar declared martial law in Egypt and took up residence in the royal palace, with plans to meet with Queen Cleopatra VII of the Egyptian Ptolemaic dynasty, so they could meet and discuss the matters between Egypt and Rome. A famous story surrounding Caesar and Cleopatra's first meeting was that she was hidden inside of a carpet and smuggled into Caesar's room. The two did discuss the issues at hand between Rome and Egypt and eventually agreed to an alliance to work together to build a liaison between the two realms. The pair quickly removed Ptolemy XIII from power and established Caesar as co-regent with Cleopatra's alliance with Rome serving as support. Caesar would be named dictator of Rome shortly after. Cleopatra and Caesar began a torrid affair shortly after their first meeting, ultimately resulting in the birth of their son Ptolemy XIV Caesar, 
who was also called Caesarian, or Little Caesar. Caesar would never wed Cleopatra as he remained loyal to his third and final wife, Calpurnia, until his death. Caesarian would be named the heir to the throne of Egypt. Despite his reputation as a fearsome commander, Caesar was said to have experienced bouts of illness that plagued him throughout his life. Even with his rise to power and influence growing over the course of his military and political career, it was seen by the Romans as a curse, a weakness he would never shake. It believed Caesar suffered from a form of epilepsy, mini strokes, or hypoglycemia, experiencing episodes of vertigo, headaches, seizures, and outbursts of recklessness that would contribute to health long-term problems. Both Caesar's grandfather and father died suddenly, possibly from heart attacks or strokes, which led contemporary and modern historians to suggest Caesar may have suffered from a range of illnesses that would leave him incapacitated at times. Some believe Caesar had complications due to malaria, suffered from a cardiovascular or cerebrovascular disease, or even a tapeworm infection that affected his brain, which could have contributed to the symptoms he exhibited throughout his life. In the play Julius Caesar, Shakespeare suggested Caesar also had trouble hearing in his right ear, although this has not been substantiated in history through any writings from the Roman Republic. His health, while not the best for a man who ascended to a post of command in the army, was not a hindrance to his life or legacy and would not stand in the way of his rise to power. Julius Caesar was the man whose life and death would end the Roman Republic and give way to the Roman Empire, transforming the way the ancient world would look forever and change the manner upon which history would unfold. Even though Caesar's death at the hands of his political enemies in the Senate in 44 BCE may be one of the most famous moments in the history of the ancient world and immortalized in the William Shakespeare play Julius Caesar, the man himself lived a lifetime of incredible adventures overflowing with fascinating exploits worthy of recognition and analysis that has inspired millions throughout history. His sexual prowess, brutal military tactics, and fascinating character are the stuff of legends and have been the subject of study for over two millennia. If nothing else, Julius Caesar was a fascinating and exceptional man whose life was far from quiet and ordinary. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.